Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Matt from the growing season here with Mike, my right hand man. Anytime that you give this guy a drill or a power tool, he's, he's just going nuts. We're off the rails. This is it. Yeah, yes. This is our final day on site. Uh, we're actually running around doing some staking of trees, both wooden stakes and uh, metal stakes. And uh, Mike loves this day because it usually involves going to some bakery because Mike's got a sweet tooth. The best place and in Oakville. The best place in Oakville. And so I wanted to take this time to show you guys about some uh, staking methods that we use. Check this out. All right, so this here, these are some wooden stakes. You see them in the truck. We've actually cut them to a specific length, and you'll notice that Mike is in the process of putting some holes in these, in the top parts of these stakes. Mike, go for it. Give me the hole there. Isn't he fantastic? And then give me the one there. Oh, the chuck came out again. The chuck came out again. There Should go. be good? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. And then I'll show you why we do this. Go for it. One more, Mikey. Give her another one. Okay, perfect. That's right. So as you can see here with Mike, what's happening is those holes up top, we've actually drilled and we wire it so that everything stays put. The stakes have been driven into the ground, as you saw in the previous clip with the stake pounder, and then we're gonna wrap the whole thing with burlap. We're gonna leave the top open so that it does allow for moisture and such. So generally in the first season, especially on a little, like on this little Teukiyama Japanese maple, we'll actually wrap the trunk just to prevent animals or anything from chewing. So again, we've got the whole teepee stake wired up top, staked into the ground with the, with the tree, with the tree stake pounder. And then we've also wrapped the trunk and now comes time for the sweater. And there you have it. Mike stapling it. Make Fine. sure everything's Final nice. Staples. Nice and secure. Mike, you wanted to say something about the Japanese maple? Yes, I'd like to point out that all Japanese maples in the world are divas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike has things to say about things. Um, notice that we kept the top open so that there is some room for moisture to, to like get in as well. I'm not necessarily trying to keep all the snow away from it. What we're trying to do is shield it from any sort of wind, especially in its first season. And you can see the little lady tucked all down there. Very okay. Good. good looking tree. So because this one's taller, this is a Crimson Queen Japanese maple, same job site, you'll notice that Mike and I are box staking this. So basically just creating a box and then we're gonna burlap all the way around it. Same procedure, we're gonna burlap the base of the trunk, make sure she's nice and protected and then we will surround it with her winter sweater. And there you have it, ladies and gents. This thing has been boxed, burlapped. Okay, so we've taken four stakes, put them in the ground and then we use staple gun not T-bone steaks. Not T-bone steaks, Mike. Mike's always thinking about his tummy. And then if you notice right at the bottom, we have the Crimson Queen's trunk all burlapped. All this is to do is to provide a windscreen for the winter months. And this is a even, even a bit excessive. If you notice, we're in, the, we're, we're in a backyard in the corner of a fence line. So there isn't going to be much wind here, but... Critters. When, or critters, yeah. But when the customer's making an investment that's about 500 bucks on this Jap maple... It's best right. to just, that's it, right, Mikey? Yeah. That's it. GrowingSeasonCanada.com. That's the website. So this is what the uh, box, uh, this is what the box. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I put up with this like sometimes 60 to 70 hours a week. Yes. Oh, good gracious.